Hi everybody, good evening to all of our viewers. This is Vyond Wallet. I'm Sumit Chaturvedi. Let us say what's making headlines in the world of business this evening. Reports say the board of Tata Sons has ordered its group companies to scrap all business dealings with Cyrus and Shipuji Polinji Group, SP Group, putting at risk transaction worth crores of rupees. Automotive world is changing much faster than anyone can imagine and now it's being said that electric cars and hybrid cars will put an end to sale of petrol and diesel cars in just 8 years. Intensifying efforts to compete with Amazon.com and Netflix, video streaming, Apple plans to spend about $1 billion on original programming content in the next 12 months. And possible roadblock to India's efforts to get black money back from Switzerland. Switzerland's biggest political party indicates it will oppose data sharing with countries high on Transparency International's Corruption Index. Let's go to a big exclusive we have. Automotive world is changing much faster than anyone can imagine. And now it is being said that electric and hybrid cars will put an end to the sale of petrol and diesel cars much earlier than previously thought. A study done by Stanford economist Tony Seba called Rethinking Transportation 2020-2030, it says petrol and diesel cars will vanish in eight years. He also thinks that global oil business will end as soon as 2030. The study also says in less than a decade, consumers will find it difficult to search for petrol pumps, spares and even mechanics who have the knowledge of internal combustion engine. Study also says people will stop driving fossil fueled cars altogether and will switch to low cost vehicles powered by electricity with an expectant lifespan of 1 million miles instead. The study points out that in future these new electric vehicles will be hired on demand, also cities will ban human drivers and the ban will spread to suburbs and then beyond. Let's talk to the Stanford economist Tony Seba who is joining us and who has released this report. Well, thanks for joining us, Mr. Seba. The first question to you, the study itself sounds unbelievable. Petrol and diesel cars will be wiped down in eight years. How it? Um, so it does sound un unbelievable, but if you look at um, 10 years ago, for instance, the smartphone came out just 10 years ago and now Pretty much everybody owns one. Um, and that's the way that technology disruptions work. They work in, not linearly, they work in exponential S curve. Once a technology product is successful, essentially it's adopted very quickly. So when we studied the disruption of um, uh, transportation, we found that there were three key technologies and business models. One is electric vehicles. Uh, the other one is right hailing, uh, essentially Ola or Uber. Uh, and the third one is autonomous vehicles. And when you put together, basically when that technology convergence happens, um, the, 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 we get that the cost of per kilometer of transportation goes down by 10 times compared to the cost of buying a new vehicle, 10 times. Uh, essentially, and it's even cheaper by up to four times than operating a vehicle that you already own. So what we see happening, which is what's happened in history, is that every time that there has been a 10x, 10 time difference in cost for a similar product or service, essentially you had a disruption. Uh, it's happened every single time in history. Um, so essentially what we, the scenario that uh, came out is that there's going to be a 10 year disruption. And if you assume that autonomous vehicles will be approved by about 2021, um, essentially by 2030, 95% of all kilometers uh, will be uh, autonomous, electric and uh, on demand. 
But Mr. Seba, you say we'll be shifting to conveyance powered by electricity. But do you think we must we are having as much electricity and where will the generation capacity come from? What about the electricity availability? Yes, so we looked at uh, the United States, that was our base case. Um, and essentially, when 95% of all miles are electric, uh, all mm -hmm. we need is an increment of 18% in the electricity production, 18%. Um, and interestingly, it's not an increment in the capacity because a lot of the productive capacity is empty at night because mostly we consume during the day. So if all we do is consume the power of the cars in the evening, uh, we don't really need additional capacity, any material capacity. But if we do manage to generate electricity, will this be devoid of pollution? I mean to ask you, what happens to the pollution? And how much will that pollution be as compared to diesel and petrol cars that are currently producing the emission, the nitrogen oxide, many poisonous gases? When we produce electricity, how will that pollution be compared to petrol and diesel cars pollution? So, you know, there, 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 there's a lot of mythology out there that, you know, converting to electric vehicles, uh, you know, in and of itself is not going to decrease the emissions. That's not true. That's not true at all. Uh, converting to electric vehicles will decrease uh, emissions. And one of the reasons, by the way, is uh, something that a lot of folks don't talk about, which is the fact that an electric vehicle, uh, the lifetime is 800,000 kilometers. 800,000 kilometers, as opposed to, you know, an internal combustion engine, which is only about 200,000. Uh, so, you know, basically the same vehicle is going to last times more, maybe four times more. Mr. Saseba, what about the countries like India? Because the cost of these vehicles is also very high. Also, if we talk about the other factors, how will India understand? Because India has a uh, capacity, the capacity of generating electricity is not as high as in other countries. So what about countries like India? Will petrol cars and diesel cars vanish in eight years in countries like India too? And it, it actually could happen in India sooner than it could happen here because um, uh, essentially um, the cost of electric vehicles is going down so quickly um, that essentially, you know, our forecast is that by 2020 or so, um, you know, th th there's gonna be parity between, even at the low end, even at the cheapest um, um, uh, vehicles. But does this mean that the auto manufacturers, the big auto giants throughout the globe, the Honda, Toyota, BMW, they are facing an existential threat and they have to now act swiftly on this? Totally. Yes. So what is going to happen is that because we use today 4% the car, when we own the car, we use it only 4% of the time. When fleets like Ola or Uber uh, use a car, they can use it 40% of the time. That means 10 times uh, more in a single day. So instead of parking, they're going to be driving around pretty much all day. Um, because of that, essentially we're going to need 80% fewer cars to drive the same number of kilometers. 80% fewer cars. Now, um, if they're all electric, which they will be because of the economics, um, essentially that means that uh, we're going to need 70% fewer cars every year than we do now. 70%. So. What's the existential threat? That the market is going to shrink by 70%. That's one. Two, that only electric vehicles are going to be sold. Um, and in the West, only autonomous vehicles are going to be sold. So essentially, by about 2021 or 2022, uh, companies, the large companies, are going to have to be producing only electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles, and even then, and, and uh, to survive, and even then, the market's going to shrink by about 70%. So this is a mass existential threat. 
To stay with us, Mr. Seba, let's talk about electric cars. Well, you have seen them on the streets, small cars zipping by on the streets with hardly a sound. Electric vehicles do make heads turn, but there are technology hurdles to overcome them before the world graduates to all electric cars. Ankit Tuteja reports. Take a look at the story. The future of the automobile is electric meaning electric cars will replace diesel and petrol vehicles and dominate the streets in the years to come. In fact, the journey has already begun. Not only the auto industry, but governments in many parts of the world have started to move towards replacing polluting cars with electric ones. The global plan to ban petrol and diesel cars looks something like this. Britain is set to ban petrol and diesel cars by 2040, Holland is set to phase out petrol and diesel vehicles by the year 2025, while Germany is mulling the option of electric only by the year 2030. The same target that India has set for an all-electric car fleet. And France will end the sale of petrol and diesel vehicles by 2040. While each country will move at its own pace, according to a report by a Stanford economist, Tony Seba, Petrol or diesel cars, buses or trucks will not be sold anywhere in the world within eight years' time. India too has been aggressively working on achieving an all-electric fleet. And it's interesting to note that the transition from petrol and diesel cars to electronic vehicles has begun in a small way in India. The government has invited global bids for 10,000 electric sedans. Cars must run up to 150 kilometers on single charge and the idea is to make them available for use by the government departments. The government has also floated tenders for 4,000 charging points across the country. The mobility mission for 400,000 e-vehicles in India is also set for 2020. Electric cars have obvious advantages. They reduce environmental pollution, also reduce dependence on costly polluting fossil fuels, require low maintenance and help reduce noise pollution. The journey has begun. How long it will take will depend on what the technological obstacles are and how quickly and efficiently these are overcome. Bureau Report, we on. Well, we're here we saw how electric cars are becoming part of our daily lives, but how far are we from seeing it much closer? Uh, thanks for staying with us, Mr. Seba, and let's come back to you. Uh, well, this apparently means high impact on oil-producing countries, the Gulf countries that are currently uh, dependent a lot on oil. Do you see a massive economic and power shift in this sense, or that will be a minorly affected? What's your sense? What about the effect? that will be having on majorly Gulf nations that are dependent uh, totally on oil? So um, countries are going to be affected differently. Uh, so the countries and the regions that produce high priced oil, and by high priced oil, I mean fracked oil, uh, deep water oil, or shale oil, essentially every oil that cannot compete at 25, um, those countries are going to be affected dramatically. So I'm talking about Norway, I'm talking about Brazil, I'm talking about Angola, Venezuela, and so on. But the countries that produce, uh, I mean, Canada also, Alberta, uh, Canadian sands. Um, but the thing about some of these countries is that they're going to be affected differently. So Canada has a very diverse economy. Uh, oil rents are only about 3.5% of the Canadian economy. So even if oil collapses, the effect on the Canadian economy is not going to be that large. And what is your message for the buyer here, Mr. Seba? How, when, uh, how should they get prepared for this scenario when petrol cars will be wiped out, they won't be there, and electric cars more and more, they will be there? So essentially, uh, the, the, the car that you have today may well be your last car. Um, and if, you know, if you're gonna buy a car, you should know that by 2021 or two, the disruption is coming. 
Well, last question to you would be, how does the whole scenario, uh, it benefits India and how India stands to benefit shifting to EVs from internal combustion engine? Any India-specific caution looking at the population and number of vehicles that we use? I think that India is going to benefit massively. I mean, for India, this is going to be a little bit like um, going from, you know, India did not have to build a telephony infrastructure that was a landline telephony infrastructure. India leapfrogged straight into, you know, mobile phones and into smartphones and so on, right? Um, and today, India is the second largest market for, uh, you know, mobile phones in the world. And it has benefit pretty much uh, the whole population. And so what I see for India is that because the uh, disruption of transportation is going to bring the cost of transport uh, is going to be 10 times cheaper than it is now. What that means is that that door-to-door -door, uh, transportation that's going to be also 10 times cheaper um, essentially means that uh, everyone is going to have access to convenient and cheap transportation. Well, thank you for talking to us, Mr. Tony Silva. We were talking to Stanford economist and he has com given a complete different picture of the future. The future says, he says that future holds no petrol, no diesel cars for us. The cars will be electric and hybrid cars and India will also be an important part of that transition. Let's see how uh, true he is going to be in the next eight years. But moving forward and staying with global news, the Price Waterhouse Coopers has been fined 5.1 million pounds or 6.6 .6 million dollars for misconduct over its audit of RSM Tannan Group in the largest ever sanction issued by UK accounting regulator. The Financial Reporting Council announced the fine yesterday along with penalties against Nicholas Poden, a senior PwC audit partner. The misconduct linked to an audit of RSM Tenant's accounts for the year ended June 2011. RSM Tenant was a professional services firm that went into administration in 2013. The record penalty comes only three months after PwC incurred another record fine for misconduct over its audit of Connaught PLC, a FTSE company that went into administration in 2010. And we were talking about electric cars and here a news is coming from Hyundai Motor that has said it will launch a long-range electric vehicle with a driving range of 500 kilometers per charge after 2021, seeking to address investor concerns that it is lagging rivals in the green car race. The automaker and affiliate Kia Motors, which together rank fifth in global vehicle sales, also said they are planning 31 eco-friendly models by 2020 up from previously flagged 28 battery-powered cars offered by the likes of Tesla are gaining traction faster than fuel cell vehicles backed by Hyundai Motor and Toyota Motor. Last year, Hyundai launched its first mass-market pure electric car, Iconic, but vehicles per charge driving range is much shorter than Tesla and GM. Hyundai also said it will introduce a small electric SUV with a driving range of 390 km in the first half of next year. And in a move that could impede India's fight against black money and corruption, a right-wing political party in Switzerland has opposed sharing of tax data to India, says the report. The right-wing Swiss People's Party or SVP maintains that, quote, corrupt and authoritarian countries should not be granted access to bank data India and Switzerland had signed a data sharing agreement in 2016 wherein Swiss authorities would share bank data with Indian tax authorities and vice versa. The first such exchange of data will start from September 2019. The move is likely hinder India's efforts in fight against corruption and black money as the automatic exchange of tax information was hailed as a victory for the Modi government. Now, according to reports, Swiss People's Party or SVP had earlier released a list of corrupt nations which include India, Argentina, Brazil, China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Colombia, Mexico, South Africa and the UAE. Last week, speaking to Vion, a Swiss bank whistleblower, Rudolf, said he has the names of Indians who have Swiss bank accounts. 
Rudolph Nine. also said if Indian government wants the name of Indian account holders, which include politicians and businessmen, it can approach Swiss courts. Rudolph is being tried by Swiss authorities for allegedly sharing information about tax evasion, money laundering and other financial violations with US tax authorities and WikiLeaks. 2019, uh, what's going to happen really uh, is uh, that the person who holds, uh, let's say, 20 or 50,000 uh, Swiss in Switzerland has opened the account in his name, uh, that he runs the risk uh, to be discovered. But it's, in my view, uh, a small risk because there is an extreme uh, uh, data flow going to happen in 2009. And if the tax authorities do not have the resources to handle that volume, and I'm pretty sure the politician will make sure that uh, uh, tax authorities do not get the resources uh, to keep uh, the thing on, uh, put it this on, on, a, on a very low uh, uh, line, not to put it in the spotlight, it's going to be very a small thing because uh, tax authorities only have a few uh, tax investigators who can handle so much of issues and that's it. And let's move to tech world news. Apple plans to spend about $1 billion on original programming in the next 12 months, intensifying efforts to compete with Amazon and Netflix video streaming. According to people familiar with the plan, a new Los Angeles based team led by former Sony executives who were hired in June will produce and buy television shows and films for Apple Music and other future video programming. Apple has accelerated its push into video over the past year as it seeks to double revenue by 2020 from its services business which includes products such as Apple Music and the App Store. It released the reality shows Planet of the Apps in June and Carpool Karaoke earlier this month. So while the budget of about $1 billion, which the people said is still being finalized, represent an increase in spending for Apple, it is significantly less than outlays by Netflix and Amazon. Apple now makes Planet of Apps and Carpool Karaoke, but it's going to go big with TV programming. A new US-based team will produce and buy shows for Apple. Apple has therefore accelerated its push into video over the past one year. Netflix, on the other hand, has said it will spend $6 billion on programming this year. And let's talk about India stories. The board of Tata Sun under N. Chandrasekharan has ordered its group companies to scrap all business dealings with Cyrus and Shapur Ministries Mysteries SP Group SVP putting at risk transactions worth hundreds of crores of rupees. Reports say the move is a significant step towards terminating all ties with Shapurji Palonji Group and indicates that battle between the two groups which was ignited when Cyrus Mystery was sacked as Tata Sun's chairman in October last year is showing no signs of coming to an end. So Tata's are going to scrap dealings with Mystery Group. The battle between Tata Mystery Group is showing no signs of coming down. Tata Sun sacked Cyrus Mystery as chairman in October last year. The directive was sent to Tata's to all group companies so far. And key Shapurji Palonji group companies to be affected by Tata's move. These companies include Eureka Forbes, Forbes & Company, And there could be some relief on the way for India's telecom sector. India's telecom companies are currently under financial stress and an inter-ministerial group on telecom will meet on August 18 to finalize recommendations for addressing financial stress in India's telecom sector. The last meeting was held on August 11, but sources say at this stage it would be premature to consider granting big-ticket policy hand-holding measures or policy intervention as the stress has been only for a couple of quarters. Big ticket policy reliefs sought by telcos include license fee cut.
Well, telecoms are demanding license fee cut, which is sought by industry. The ministry is likely to push for moving prime minister prime lending rate to the marginal cost of lending rate, which would provide three to four percent arbitrage opportunities for the telecom companies, providing much needed liquidity for the sector. Another measure which would be taken into consideration is a deferred payment schedule extension to 16 to 18 years, another demand of telecom sector of India. And with the government looking at all electric vehicles fleet by 2030, India will be an interesting destination for Tata Motors, Jaguar, Land Rover, British Arm. According to Tata Group's Chief Ethics Officer Mukund Rajan, Jaguar Land Rover has already announced launch of its electric vehicles. In fact, Tata Motors has already launched hybrid fuel cell commercial vehicles. Tata Motors has already started commercial test drive of its first batch of electric buses under Marco Polo brand here in India. And Pakistan's all-weather ally China has decided to invest further in the nation. China plans to build a petrochemical complex in Lahore in Pakistan at the cost of $4 billion. The decision was arrived at after a meeting of Chinese delegation with the members of Federation of Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industry. The decision comes just days after Chinese Vice President had visited Pakistan on the occasion of the country's Independence Day. China has already invested a multi-billion dollar project in Pakistan called China-Pakistan Economic Corridor as part of President Xi Jinping's One Belt, One Road project. Well, that's all we have in this edition of Vyond Wallet. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Vyond and thanks for watching us. Thank you.